Hey there folks, it's Desert Fox back again with the Sea Thieves Guide. Today, as promised, we're gonna look at the Gold Hoarder Wayfinder Voyages, also known as Vault Voyages. So stop staring at the sunset, let's go make some gold. First stop is the Gold Hoarder on any outpost. Remember, you have to be at least level 25 in Gold Hoarders in order to buy one of these voyages. Once we have that purchased, we'll make our way back to the ship so we can slap that bad boy down and vote for it. After we vote for the voyage, we're given the Wayfinder Compass. This compass acts like Jack Sparrow's compass in Pirates of the Caribbean, except instead of pointing you to what you desire most, it points you to work. This voyage acts in stages. First, you use the compass to find pieces of the map, which then reveal the location of a key, which when dug up, then tells you which of the five islands containing vaults you need to go to. Then using the key, opening that vault to haul out as much loot as you can in about three minutes. So for right now, just take a look at the compass. Wherever it points you is where you need to go for the first stages of the voyage. And for right now, it seems it wants us to go into that storm. Remember in the first video when I said you'd find more supplies as you sail on? Here's a good example. Here it looks like I'm off by a bit, so just a little course correction and we're back where we need to go. You can tell you're getting closer to the island that the compass is pointing to when the needle gets a bit more sensitive, so pay attention how I turn the wheel so that I can see the needle moving with the island instead of pointing off past it. I also pulled up my sails to slow down a bit because I'm pretty sure this is the island we're going to and going slower will make it easier to prove this is the right island but also ensure that I don't have to turn around and come back. As I'm hopping off onto the island, you can see that little dance the compass needle is doing, which is more of an indication that this is our island. After finding some skellies, I'm ready to dig up our first piece. The compass will start spinning like crazy, and this is where we dig. And of course, because of our digging, we've awoken some more skellies. Cue the fight music. You may notice skellies from these voyages have green eye patches. They have a chance of dropping trinkets that you can sell at the gold hoarders. Uh, no, please. Don't be like me and forget to pick up the parchment. We need it for the map. When you think you're ready to move on, make sure you check the compass just in case there's another piece of the map to dig up on this island. And since there's none left here, let's check out the map and see what we have so far. If Rathbone smiles upon thee, you might get an X and be able to identify the island you're needing to sail to. You'll need Bolt to go dig up the key. If you are unsure of what island it could be, compare this map to islands on the ship map. And if for whatever reason you can't find the X on your map, check the torn edges. Sometimes an X will be hidden there. Since we have the X and already know it's located at Wanderer's Refuge, we're going to start heading northwest for the next part of the voyage. Seems like a good time for some good old self-promotion. I stream as often as I can over at twitch.tv slash itsdesertfox. Come hang out with us sometime. I do like to mark the map as close to where I think the dig is. It makes it a little bit easier on myself. But now that we're ready, we can hop onto the island and dig up that key. Of course, when you start digging up the chest, you'll usually have more skelly spawn, but they're no more difficult than earlier. I know you're supposed to try to fight me, but I am trying to make a video here. Come on. Since there's no more danger, we can go finish digging up the chest and bring it aboard. I'm opening the chest to grab the gold, but I'm also leaving it on the beach for any trinkets the skellies may have dropped so that it's quicker to get onto the ship. You can see it for a split second here, but each vault key has the island in the name. So for example, ours says Kraken's Fall Gold Key, which tells us that we need to go find the vault on Kraken's Fall. And the thing about these keys a lot of people don't realize is that you can read the key's inscription to be given a hint as to where on the island that particular vault key is located. Now that we're off to Kraken's Fall, time to find something to occupy your time. Like the Crab Scuttle. Once you're at your island, park as close to the vault as you can, and if you're solo, you might want to gather up some supplies just in case you're attacked, as you'll likely not have enough time to do so when you return to your ship. When you finally get on the island, I suggest bringing a collector's chest, which has the proper name of treasure chest, but I'm still protesting that change. You might need one in case you get any trinkets out of the vault. Once you find the vault door, you'll then need to find where you can put down the vault key to open the door. They're usually not very far and have a distinct vertical rectangular shape with a square in the middle. When the door is open, you will then go down a short path to a second door. 
This door will take a little longer to open. It's not bugged and you didn't do anything wrong. You just need to wait a little longer for this one to open up for you. Once you have access to the treasure room, you may at first just want to take out as many pieces of treasure as you can right off the bat. Which is fine, go ahead and do that, but the real treasure that you'll likely want requires a puzzle to be solved. First step to solving this is to search around this room for at least one of three medallions. This will give you a piece of the puzzle and you can absolutely solve it with only one, but you can grab the remaining two if you'd like. I also want to add the medallions shine brighter than most other loot. If you're looking around this room and can't find a medallion, try climbing up higher and look for something that's shining bright. The first medallion that we throw in activates an altar, which shows us that the correct side for the furthest left totem will be a glyph of a chest on it. The furthest right totem will have a combination of all available glyphs, with one side being a combination of all correct glyphs for each of the three totems. As long as you put in the first medallion, you'll have a 50-50 chance of using the right combination, as the first glyph revealed will only be on two sides of the furthest right totem. This is why I recommend grabbing at least one medallion instead of going at it without one. As you just saw, the first combination didn't work, so I flipped the furthest right totem until I saw a different combination also with a chest. This one will be the right one, as we've already eliminated the first one that we tried. All right, now that we have the chest of ancient tributes, it's time to start dragging the rest of the gold hoarder loot out. You have three minutes from the time the door opens before it closes again, and if you get locked in, you'll have to take a ride on the ferry. In the meantime, I grabbed another clip of me completing the puzzle so that we can have another example of how to complete it. Enjoy. Ha ha, wasn't that clip great? While you were watching, I got as much loot out as I can and the door is about to close. Now begins the arduous task of taking this stuff back to the ship, but luckily for you, I've cut all that out. So because Kraken's Fall doesn't really leave us with a place to park the ship, to make this easy, I'm carting the loot out into the water away from the vault, but in a spot where I can hit it all with my harpoon. The original clip of me doing this was about 14 minutes, which is significantly sped up when you're able to grab items basically straight from the outside of the first vault door. Now it's all harpooned onto the ship, a little check to make sure nothing else is shining or just floating over there, we can start making our way to an outpost and make that money. And time for a shameless teensy loot haul for the sake of showing what you might get from this voyage. Keep in mind that there's three types of keys that you'll get and they're based on your level. A stone key, which is low tier loot, silver, which is medium, and gold, which is high value loot. So don't worry that you're not getting captain's chests. If you're a low level and gold hoarder, you're gonna get low value stuff. But keep doing these voyages and consider using an emissary to maximize rep and gold. I do plan on making a video on emissaries in the future, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And that's it for me today, folks. Keep your eyes on the horizon for the next video. And if you'd like to help support this video and the channel, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Check me out when I'm live by going to twitch.tv slash it's desert fox. Happy sailing, pirates. And time for a nose itch.